hello, and welcome to Mapping the College Audition, a podcast where we explore the landscape of the college theater world and try to demystify this daunting audition process. I'm your host, Charlie Murphy, director of MTCA, Musical Theater College Auditions, and today we have a really fun show lined up for you. Um, We have Caitlin Hopkins from Texas State. Uh, Caitlin has worked with us for years at MTCA and is a really good friend of my partner, Leo, um, as well as a phenomenally successful woman in so many aspects, many of which you'll hear about today. Um, This is another one of our college deep dive episodes, so we're going to give you that snackable audio tour of various great theater programs around the country. Um, I hope you enjoy this one. Today we got into what it means to be a sustainable, healthy artist and some of the life skills that Texas State offers their students, Um, getting a BFA for cheap. Uh, We talk about the social justice mindset of Texas State students and what it is to bring your whole person in the room and debunking some of the myths of type. Um, so I hope you enjoy that. Uh, up next, we're going to have Elizabeth Stanley. Uh, you may know her as a Grammy Award winning and Tony nominated actress, but I know her as the person who yells at me to unload the dishwasher. So that will be a unique podcast I think you guys will really enjoy. But till then, let's get to Caitlin. All right, I'm here with Caitlin Hopkins. Uh, Caitlin is an actor, a producer, an educator, and a consultant. Um, she's the creator and president of Fontis Lozenges and the co-founder of Living Mental Wellness, which we're going to talk about today in the interview. She has a number of Broadway credits, including Noises Off and Anything Goes with Patti Lapone. Um, she originated the role of Mama Who in How the Grinch Stole Christmas and originated a number of off-Broadway roles, including Bat Boy, the musical for which she received a Drama Desk and Ovation Award nomination and a standing ovation from my high school age self. She was fantastic in the role. Um, She was also in Bear, a pop opera, and the Great American Trailer Park musical. Uh, She's done a number of national tours, including she originated the role of Diane in Disney's On the Record, where she worked with MTCA's own Leo Ash Evans. Uh, Caitlin's also appeared in over 50 television shows. She directed, co-wrote, and co-produced the world premiere of The World According to Snoopy. Um, She's received the 2016 Presidential Award for Excellence in Teaching from Texas State University. And in 2009, she created the BFA Musical Theater Program at Texas State University. Oh my, what a bio. Caitlin, how are you? How are you doing? I'm doing really well. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Um, a little bit about Texas State. Uh, Texas State is located in San Marcos, Texas. Yeah. The average class size is a very small 12 to 14 students. Um, they have a BFA in musical theater and a BFA in acting, as well as a number of other BAs and BFAs in the theater world. Um Caitlin, it's so exciting to have you on the program to talk a bit about Texas State. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. So Caitlin, tell me a little bit about your background. I'd love to hear how you came to be at your current position at Texas State. Oh, uh, well, actually, I was on tour um, with another national tour at the time. I was doing Dirty Dancing, the musical. And I was, um, after that, my husband and I were supposed to go back to New York. I had been asked to do, um, they were doing a Broadway revival of Bye Bye Birdie at the Roundabout. And I was going to finish the tour and go do that and got a call uh, from Texas State University asking if I would be interested in coming to interview for a position to create a new BFA musical theater program. Um, It it wasn't, uh, I'd never heard of Texas State University, to be honest. I was like, oh, UT in Austin? And they said, no, no, we're in, we're in San, we're south of that. We're in San Marcos. We're between Austin and San Antonio. I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> um, but they were really interested in um, having a, a BFA degree designed by professionals for young professionals and thinking a little outside of the traditional musical theater um, BFA degree um, and having everything sort of housed under one umbrella, um, having all, you know, having the musical theater faculty specifically just serving the musical theater students and not farming classes out to a dance school, a music school, an acting school, um, which was very intriguing to me. And very exciting. Um, and so that was sort of how I, I uh, my husband and I ended up here uh, was because was they asked if we would come and consider it. And we came down on my day off. We like flew in on a Monday and I was back in time to do my show Tuesday night and um, had a chance to sort of get a sense of what they were looking for. Um, and yeah. I love that. It, it feels like so many cool things that artists do in their lives, like take that little bit of a jump, take a little bit of going, I'm going to make a switch. I'm going to make a, I'm going to take, take this opportunity that comes. That's so much of what it is, isn't it? Is that, you know, you just sort of say yes to things. And, and, you know, I thought, well, if, if I 
don't like it or I'm not good at it. I just will go go back to New York. And, you know, we were having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was such an incredible opportunity uh, as well. because One, because I had started to discover that I just was so passionate about teaching and working with the young artists. But it also meant I would have an opportunity to direct. And that was also another you know, reason why I was very, very interested in looking here as a, as a place to develop a, a new a new program. I love that. Um, so let's get into Texas State a little bit. Um, I'd love, in, in brief, sort of what does it mean to you to be a Texas State student? So what are you kind of looking for in your students? Mm, that's a good question. Um, well, I'm looking for artists. You know, I'm looking for young artists who want to work professionally, like that, you know, that know that this is that what they want to do and what they want to pursue and are looking to be leaders in the industry to create the work. Um, so, um, you know, everyone wants to be on Broadway, right? Like that's just, you know, everyone has that dream. Absolutely. Um, but what I'm also looking for is somebody who wants to be an artist period, right? Like in, you know, be a working actor and wants to be in an environment where they can explore their artistry in a lot of different levels. Maybe um, we tend to also look for the students who also want to be choreographers, also are interested in exploring playwriting or directing or music direction or composition, um, mm. because we have a lot of opportunities here to first facilitate and produce um, student driven work, which is very exciting to us. I'm looking for people with integrity with a willingness mm. to play, um, who want to be in a room with a bunch of other really talented people and be challenged, um, you know, to explore um, their art form, you know, and it's, it's, a, it's an art form that's ever changing. It's very fluid. And I also want people who like are interested in really unpacking and questioning and researching traditional musical theater pedagogy versus <laughs> um, today and what is needed mm -hmm. and required of artists today um, and continuing to, you know, evolve a new vocabulary for how to approach the work as musical theater artists. Now, specifically to the training, you know, if you get a freshman uh, and then you get them for four years, how do you feel like over those four years, a Texas State student is going to change? So what are they going to learn? How are they going to come out different than they entered mm -hmm. your school? Uh, also a great question. Um, well, you know, the first year here is, is really about exploring who you are as a person, as an artist, what kind of work do you want to do? Um, you know, foundationally that first year, there's um, a lot of attention paid to um, us all getting to know each other, right? Like, you, you know, people talk a lot about, well, you've got to bring yourself to the work. Well, what does that even mean? How do you do that? Right. I want to know about each student's um, culture, their mm -hmm. ethnicity, their, where they come from, their economic backgrounds, their, you know, what type of material speaks to them, what resonates with them, why. If you could sing anything, if you had no limitations, based on boxes that other people created, types that other, you know, some sort of preferred body type, preferred sound type, preferred whatever, right? If if you are the box, if there's no box, mm -hmm. what stories do you want to tell? And how do you want to tell them? What narratives do you want to put out into the world? And we can't do that unless we get to know the artist and then foundationally train that you know, human to take care of their voices, to take care of their bodies, to take care of their mental health, to take care of, you know, uh, just, just foundationally looking at the life skills, the business skills that you need to do this in a healthy, sustainable, repeatable way. That's what mm. technique offers you, right? It's a, it's a structure. It's a delivery system, if you will, for your artistry. They're already artists. Like they're, they, they already are extraordinary at what they do. That's not the question, right? That's not, we're not teaching them how to be good. We're teaching them how to be healthy so that they can have long, successful careers where they can pursue any medium in any way, right? Like, and, and define the art form.
and be leaders in the art form. Absolutely. I'd love to get a little into the, some of the specifics because um, I can echo both of the things you've talked about or two of the things you talked about, both in terms of wellness and in terms of the kind of currentness of your program. Mm-hmm. I think that's something that certainly students will echo back to us and say, this is what we know about Texas State. I'd love to get into some of specifically some of those innovations. So w- what does that mean in terms of what does wellness uh, mean for a freshman if I'm coming into your program? And then some of the ways that you're able to stay current um, to, the, to the industry. Great. So the wellness stuff. So they're going to learn about vocal health to take care of their voices, to take care of their bodies um, so that they are strong and versatile and flexible, right? Like in every way. In terms of sort of the mental wellness aspect, that's approached on a couple different ways. So we did research here with a top um, sports psychologist, meditation expert, communications expert, all, all kinds of amazing people came together and did research on uh, mental wellness for performing artists and athletes. And the Living Mental Wellness Program is now something that isn't just taught in my program, um, but the university and the department noticed that we had the highest academic achievers we had the, in the entire university. We had um, the highest graduation rates of any program yeah. at the university. It's a university of 39,000 students. So I'm very proud of that, right? So they sort of looked at us and they're like, well, what are they doing differently over there? Um, so this uh, life skills program, uh, first, first and foremost, they're learning about the science of the brain and how the brain works under stress. They're learning how to self-regulate their own body chemistry. And that brain science is really foundational to everything else because you can totally learn how to self-regulate your nervous system, heal your nervous system uh, with tools and techniques to do that, right? So that's sort of foundational. And then you get a lot of mindfulness techniques, meditation techniques. And then we have this developmental model um, that's evidence-based. We did research on And it has six different module components, and they are these. They are um, time management, goal-setting skills, coping skills, communication skills, um, leadership skills, and problem-solving skills. And all of those are built um, one skill on top of the other, ultimately used together, right? Um, All of that together for those advanced problem-solving skills. Now, what the research proves is that when you increase someone's life skills, you decrease their anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. And we're also looking at things like, you know, social media addictions and perfectionism and the imposter syndrome. Like how do you navigate a lot of the negative self-talk and giving them tools and uh, vocabulary um, around that and ways to utilize that in their work and application in the work. Right. Um, So that's what some of that mental wellness curriculum looks like. um, And that's all, fall semester freshman year is part of their it's literally part of their intro to musical theater class but Mm -hmm. um the all the students in the department take the living mental wellness curriculum as part of their theater activities class um Mm. so and we're the second largest theater department in the country we have over a thousand majors if you can believe it which is so funny because i was Mm -hmm. like this little tiny program (laughs) within this huge (laughs) Um, department, but it's really exciting because it means they have a lot of performance opportunities and just, you know, we have a huge film and television division with a brand new building. And so, you know, they're getting so much experience, you know, on camera, on stage, um, musicals, plays, you know, getting to perform in plays as well as musicals. So they really are sort of coming out with a very, very well-rounded um, resume and experience related to being a working actor. Not just I, I love both those things. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it's something we hear a lot. Uh, one of the questions I'm asking all of our artists when we have artists on, mm-hmm. um, or non-faculty artists, I should say, um, about how, what they might do to change their program, a lot of people will either talk about wellness or they'll talk about business of the business. How do I, how do I survive once I move to New York oh, City sure. kind of skill? Yeah, well, that's, that's very foundational here. You know, I mean, I think as part of the, maybe why they, they were interested in, in me designing the program was because I had a lot of producing uh, background mm-hmm. as well as um, performance work, obviously. Um, and so, you know, that allowed me to design a whole series of business of the business labs. And those, um, although m- most of them are junior and senior year, there are foundational ones that are freshman year, right? So we're already looking at things like financial planning 
and having the VP mm-hmm. of Merrill Lynch come in and you know talk to them about financial planning and helping them save and helping them create budgets and a one year plan, a five year plan out of school um, and sort of you know looking at it uh, both short term and long term goals and all of that are, again is part of that mental wellness curriculum, right? Mm -hmm. They have goal setting and time management skills built in freshman year. And so we're looking at both the short, like the the sprint and the marathon, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) You're sort of looking at the whole career. Um, And we are transitioning them into the career. We're very much a a forever program is what we say. We're not a four-year program. We're a forever program. And that fifth year and sixth year, especially transitioning into the industry, we are very, very, very hands-on. Um, with our graduates. Um, so those business, the business labs are things like how to read a contract, understanding contract terminology, um, knowing all the different contracts that you are going to work under, having a working knowledge of what's the difference between theater contracts, film and television contracts, commercial contracts, cruise lines, summer stock. What are they called? What should you be looking for? Um, mm-hmm in those contracts? How do you negotiate it if you don't have an agent? And even if you do have an agent, how do you participate, right? And have agency in your own career and the decisions that you're making? Um, How to do interviews, uh, how to give good interviews, um, how to get an agent. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, like there's all of these sort of um, different aspects of the, like you are the business, like it's sort of, like Apple's the company, right? But within Apple, Apple's got all these different products that they're selling, right? Well, you're you're sort of looking Mm -hmm. at that the same way. If you're looking at branding, you are the company, but you have all of these different things that you're selling within that. You want to do film, you want to do television, you want to do voiceovers, you want to do commercials, you want to do musicals, you want to do, you know, comedy, drama, whatever it is, right? You also do improv. Um, And so you're looking at how do you, how do you brand that? Um, how do you use social media for you, not against you? Um, you know, a, a lot of people early on make some not great decisions that I think really negatively impact um, their lives and their careers and understanding how connected that is. You know, so those, the, that business stuff is, is really important. It's really important because no matter how talented they are, no matter how well trained they are, if they don't know how to manage their lives and they don't know how to manage their careers, we have failed them as educators. I I Mm -hmm. think it is a failure in education to not foundationally address business skills and self-care skills, period. Mm -hmm. They have to understand how to balance their lives and their careers. And this is not an industry that has supported that in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of myth, like what I'm going to call myths and BS out there that um, people, you know, you have to sacrifice yourself for the show. You have to dance through the pain. Mm -hmm. Um, The show must go on. Like all of these sort of things, like who made that up? Boy, are we questioning that during COVID. I mean, everyone was saying that, like, you know, my my partner's in the cast of Jagged Little Pill and like everyone was like sick at the time. And Mm -hmm. they were like, should we be pushing through right now (laughs) during a pandemic? You know, it's like, we kind of realized maybe we should go home when we're sick. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. You know, so looking at, um, you know, how, how do you train and help develop a healthy artist? Because a healthy artist is a sustainable artist. And at the end of the day, the producers and the casting directors and the creative teams, they, they need healthy, repeatable, sustainable. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you're sacrificing that from the get go, then how do you ever achieve it? Okay, so this is a lot of great reasons to go to your school. Um, why might a student not go to your school? So mm-hmm. these are all these wonderful things. If you're, you know, deciding with a student, and maybe they're, maybe this was about a week ago. This was happening to you as we came up to the decision day, and some people are deciding between your school and another school. Yeah. Why do you find that students end up saying, oh, "I'm going to go somewhere else"? Yeah, I think you know, I think it's a really, really good question, an important one. And I always feel like part of my job with the students that we make offers to is helping them make the right decision, even if it's not us, right? Like we're, we're there to, it's not about us, it's about them. And it doesn't serve us or them to make the wrong decision, right? So I think, um, I think questions to ask yourself when you're in that position is, 
do I really want a liberal arts education or do I really want a conservatory education, right? What am I looking for? Um, and really understanding the difference and what that means. You know, um, we run the program like a conservatory, right? So the training is, mm -hmm. is like that. But the degree plan is a liberal arts degree plan. So what that means is most of my students are minoring in other things. They're graduating magna summa cum laude. They're in the honors college. You know, that stimulus, that global perspective is really, really important to them. Um, if social justice and um, diversity, equity, and inclusion are not important to you, we're not the right place for you. Our program is founded in, you know, artist mm -hmm. activists, artists who are interested in healing their communities, serving their communities, understand that it's about something bigger than them. We're a Hispanic serving institution, right? 56% of our student body at the entire university are students of color. Mm -hmm. if, if, you, if you want a melting pot, right? If you want a place where we are having the hard conversations and making decisions with our students about the season, the concepts for the shows, the casting for the shows, um, really unpacking the pedagogy, really looking, taking deep dives into what we do and why we do it and what we want and all those things. Like, we're not the right place for you if that if that's not sexy. Is what I say. If, if that isn't sexy to you, we're not the right place and that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not going to be the right place for everybody. Um, but but this university was founded in social justice. Um, I'd love to know about kind of outside of the theater program and maybe outside of the musical theater program and, and outside of the theater program at large. Um, what does Texas State afford a prospective student in the, the larger university sense? Yeah, um, well, it's a beautiful campus. It's just gorgeous. We're in the hill country. And, you know, I'm a girl from New York City. So, you know, every day when I see deer and turtles and foxes and some, you know, <laughs> the hawks fly by and I'm like, oh my God, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's very beautiful. Very, very beautiful here. And we're between Austin and San Antonio, which are two incredible cities that have so much music and film festivals and dance. And just, if you're a foodie, this is the place to be like San Marcos and Austin and San Antonio, like just so much incredible food. <laughs> where mm -hmm. this whole program is like we're all obsessed with food. Um, so there's a river here that runs through campus that is the water 72 degrees all year long and tubing and snorkeling and kayaking is like a thing here. It's like part of the culture of the university mm -hmm. and the program and the kids just love it. I mean, there's nothing more fun than river fest, which is, you know, all the kids are like tubing down the river and there's live bands, like just for miles on either side of the river. And they have mm. their coolers full of food and beverages. And, you know, they're <laughs> floating the river and having a great time. Um, you know, I think it's, it's a proper university campus, you know, mm -hmm. And it's sort of a good, um, because of our guest artist program, you know, we have four or five industry professionals a semester coming down here and doing master classes with the students. So, you know, their connection to New York um, and to the relationships that they develop with industry professionals here over the four years that they're here is something that I think is sort of unique to the program and really serves them. And the university itself you know, there's the Honors College. And again, like I said, a lot of our students are minoring in other subjects. It's just a very, um, there's just a lot of stimulus here in a really, really good way. You know, mm -hmm. it allows you a real global perspective. Very, very cool. Um, and we did get to talk to Neil a bit. Neil did one of our preview oh, episodes. Yeah. So he he was like our practice was re, um, Neil's a, a good friend of mine. But um, I'd love to hear because the uh, listeners won't yet have heard that episode when this airs okay. um, a little bit about how the acting and musical theater schools uh, um, intersect or how they work together. Oh, um, you're sort of acting yeah. students and musical theater students. Yeah. So so the musical theater program has, you know, on average about 50 some odd students in it. We take, we take 12 to 14 a year. The acting program is a little bit bigger, but not much. I think they take more like 16 a year ish. Um, and the two programs are connected in, in many ways. Uh, we share a voice and speech teacher. 
And although we have our own, uh, musical theater has an acting teacher who teaches beginning and intermediate acting, the freshman year acting. We share acting teachers for realism, characterization, improv, Shakespeare, on camera. They have a whole semester of on camera acting. Um, so we're, we're sharing four or five acting teachers and a voice and speech teacher. And the students are auditioning for all the plays. And if they're in, well, there are many students in the acting program who are incredible dancers and singers who, um, you know, maybe considered musical theater or also want to do musical theater, but chose to, to go into a BFA acting program. So they're also auditioning for our musicals. Our musical kids are auditioning for the plays. Um, so there's a lot of crossover and cross pollination in a lot of the performance opportunities. Um, and they all live in the same dorm freshman year. <laughs> and so that's really great. So they're really, you know, creating community and creating relationships um, from the get go in their freshman dorm experience. Having beverages on rivers together, you know, all of it. That's the whole thing. <laughs> um, I'd love to t turn a little bit to the audition because now many of our students, especially maybe our 16, 17 year old listeners and potentially their parents um, are going to be thinking a lot about the audition. Um, if you give me in short, what do you think makes a great audition for you? What, what do you really look to see in an audition? Mm. <sighs> that they love what they're doing. Joy in the work, joy in the work, joy in the work. Right. So you know, I think it's really easy to get stuck in overthinking the material they're doing. Like, is it overdone? Or, you know, mm -hmm. my voice teacher said this is a good choice for me, so I'm going to do it, but I don't really like it. You know, at the end of the day, I, we don't care what they do. I, I don't care if I hear gimme gimme 10 times in a row. Mm -hmm. If they do it well, that's awesome. If it's the thing that they love to do the best, Double awesome. They're going to bring, like, there are no 10 people in the world that are going to do it the same way because you're all different people. Mm. Right? So don't worry. There's no such thing as like overdone material. Right? It, it, so to me, I'm, I'm looking for them to give me a sense of who they are, right? And the choices they make and how they interpret it. And just to be present in the room with me and be willing just to. Um, have a conversation about the work, maybe take some adjustments just to play a little, um, mm. you know, and then the pre-screens, honestly, you know, the pre-screens are, are just about, and maybe, you know, this is, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing to say, it's just the truth. Like really the pre-screens are just about making a cut, right? Like you're just, you're not mm -hmm. trying to cast somebody from a pre-screen you know, or select your class. You're just looking at that information. And I actually like read the essays and watch the wild card and do all that. Right. And you're just trying to get a sense of, Oh, could we serve this student? Are we the right place for this student? You know, with the number of applicants, all these programs have, we say no in pre-screens to students who are really good, mm -hmm. really good. So what I say to the parents is please don't think, if a kid doesn't pass a pre-screen, it means they're not good enough or they're not competitive. It doesn't mean that at all. It means I don't think I can serve them. I'm looking mm -hmm. for the students that I really think are a good fit for us and we would also be a good fit for them. And, you know, that, that, so I don't know if that's helpful, right? But you really just have to kind of not play the comparison game, like not compare mm -hmm. yourself to other students and where they are. And like, you just have to do your work and, love what you do and trust that you're going to end up in the right place. I love that. Um, okay. My personal favorite question. This is really just like my personal poll because I'm interested in hearing this from all the, the faculty heads. Um, how much, if you had to estimate, however you want to estimate, um, how much of your decision artistically in the room is based on the kind of skill displayed in the work, you know, singing, dancing, acting versus those kind of intangibles, the adjustments, the interview, how much would you say is one versus the other? If you can parse Ooh, it out. Good question. Um, it's really both. It really is both. It really feels almost split down the middle to me. Um, here's what I mean by that. Of course, we're all looking for talented people at the level mm. that you all are competing. You're all good right? Like I, I very rarely see a student that I don't think is good, right? I'm like, wow, you're really good. So 
and when we look for talent, it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to have the same ability level in all three areas, right? That's what you're going to school for. So, you know, maybe you've spent years dancing and you haven't worked much on your singing and your acting yet or vice versa, right? So we're not necessarily looking for someone to have the same level of ability across the board. What we're looking for is potential. What we're looking for is that intangible thing too, that you you can't explain why you think it's extraordinary. You just do. Like you, you just have a, you have a gut response. You have a heart response. I mean, I, I can tell you, so I, I remember the auditions of so many students where I started crying mm. because I had such um, a deep response to what that artist was doing in the room, right? And that's not, I don't know that that's talent. It's just something mm-hmm. you can't explain, right? It's that mm. untan- intangible thing. Um and the interview matters and the essay matter. I mean, here, you know, I can't speak for other schools, but, you know, here, mm-hmm. all of that matters because we're looking to commit to these artists for the rest of, you know, as long as we're here, right? The rest of their lives, the rest of our life, you know, like we're, we're in for the long haul. And and because we're a small program, like you, you really want to like people and you want to feel like I want to be in a room with these 14 people every day, mm. even when I'm having a bad day, even when they're having a bad day, right? It's not, mm-hmm. it's not when we're all at our best that's hard. It's that what we do is hard and often, you know, you have a bad day, right? Mm-hmm. But are these the, the students that you want to be challenged by, that you want to give every ounce of everything that you have to offer? Um, are, are the, you know, we're also looking not just at the individuals, right, Charlie? Like we're looking at, what 14 individuals, if I put them together, uh-huh. make a really interesting ensemble and group of humans that are going to make some noise, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and do some stuff, right? So you're, you're also thinking about, well, which 14 people do I want to put in a room, right? And mm-hmm. that's not about the individual. That's about a larger idea. Um, their grades matter to us mm-hmm. anyway, you know, like, I, I really, I care about their grades. I care about their essay, you know, all of it, it all matters. Well, it's all part of the Well, I, I was going to ask exactly that, that how does that work with your school in terms of if you want a student artistically, um, how does that work with their academics and the university itself in terms of your ability yeah, so to barter? The, yeah. So the students also apply to the university and they have to be accepted into the university, obviously for ultimately for us to, to make them an offer. Um, and we, we just ask that they apply to the university at the same time that they apply to the program so that we have that information so that they're not wasting time and money. Like if they can't mm-hmm. get into the university. Now, Caitlin, I have to just take a, a pause and say, how have we not talked about the cost of your school? Neil must've spent 20 <laughs> minutes talking about the cost. That's one of the best <laughs> things about, that's the other thing that students will always come back and they'll go, it costs how much? Fantastic. Yeah. Well, we're very, very lucky. You know, we are allowed to offer all of our out of state students in state tuition. And the way that works is um, we're able to give them a thousand dollar scholarship a year. And that thousand dollar scholarship qualifies them for in-state tuition, which saves them almost thirteen thousand dollars in out of state tuition costs and mm-hmm. fees. And that a thousand dollars gets applied to their tuition bill automatically, right? So it reduces mm-hmm. now that's before they have academic scholarships or merit based like that's before any other money that we or the university may give them. Most of our students have anywhere from fifty to eighty or ninety percent academic scholarships as well. So we have students who's actually made money on the deal, right? Like the presidential (laughs) scholarship here is like 12 grand a year. Well, our tuition's only Mm 12,600. So if you're also getting a grand from us, like that just covered your tuition, Mm -hmm. right? So um, our tuition still, you know, is very low um, for our in-state students. It's it's under 13,000 a year. And um, then if you add room and board onto that, you know, um, that's usually they tell you to double it, right? So if you're budgeting mm-hmm. 25 to 26 grand a year, um, that's, that's about what it's going to cost before scholarships, right? Before mm-hmm. any other additional scholarships. Um, and we've got lots of good stuff here related to that too. Mm. It's a huge boon for 
you know, a business that I think people often talk about, it's hard to have access into it if you don't come from means. And I think not having to pay $80,000 a year to get into the business is certainly a helpful uh, step in that direction. Um, I could talk about this with you for like the next three hours, but I know we ha- we've got to let you go because we're already at, at time. Um, I'd love to, is there anything else that you kind of want to plug um, or things they should, places people should be following you if they loved hearing you and want to follow more of you in Texas State? Yeah, I would love for people to check out our YouTube channel. I think that's a really great way to, to learn about the program because there's so much original work by our students on there and mm-hmm. a lot of our production work. So I think you get a real sense of the program program and and the level of work that's being done here. Um, You can follow us on all the social media platforms. We just started a TikTok. Um, (laughs) Yes. And and our production of Spring Awakening is uh, airing this weekend, which we're very, very proud of. And yeah, so I would say, you know, do the social media thing, do the YouTube thing um, and go to the website. You know, there's a lot of good information there about sort of who we are and what we're about and what we're interested in and doing in a room together, you know, I think it's, it's all there and reach out to our students. I think they're always happy and proud to, to talk about their experiences here. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on, Caitlin. It's such an honor. It's always an honor to have us have you teach master classes for us. And anytime we get to interact with you is such a pleasure, but it was such an honor to have you on the podcast today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for all you're doing. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed listening to Caitlin as much as I did. Uh, She's such a beautiful spirit. Um, I feel like I could just listen to her talk about art for days. Um, This is a place where I'm going to do a little bit of a deeper dive into something that came up during the interview. Um, I just really want to highlight Caitlin's conversation about type um, and that idea of kind of breaking out of the boxes that the world can sometimes try to put us in. There are very few things in college prep that I'm going to say I think are like capital T true, Um, but this is one of those, um, which is I think a lot of high school teachers or potentially maybe some less knowledgeable people who are helping with college prep from a very well-intentioned perspective often will try to type their students. And it may come from the training that they got. And so they said, well, I was told you're an ingenue, so you should sing ingenue songs. I was told you look like this, so you're a character actress. Um, And I think... Uh, I'm just going to really agree with what Caitlin said, and it's certainly something MTCA has always taught, which is that we want you to work from the inside out, not the outside in, right? You're going in there and telling the story of you. You are not going in there trying to fit into the box of some playwright from 50 years ago or some person who wrote a musical and thought that this person has to look like this or, you know, people who sound like this have to be like this, anything like that. It's a... I th- it's not that those people are necessarily wrong, but I do think their information is a little outdated, certainly in terms of the way that college faculty are going to be looking at students, um, but even in terms of the way the business is going. Um, this modern business that we're building, it has changed from what it was 30 years ago, and it is changing literally by the day um, in some of these conversations. And the artists that are kind of getting into these schools are going to create a business that is more inclusive and that thinks thinks more creatively and thinks more outside the box. So I just really want to echo what Caitlin said. I think that is a really helpful way to approach your material and approach your artistry um, from the inside out, not the outside in. And that's certainly what we do at MTCA. Um, If you enjoyed this episode and want to hear more, please hit that subscribe button. Follow us wherever you can follow us. Um, If you have questions for us at the pod, you can email us at mailbag at mappingthecollegeaudition.com, and we will try to answer a few of those questions in some mailbag segments. If you are interested in working with MTCA for help with your individual preparation for your college audition journey, please check us out at mtcollegeauditions.com. To my young artists out there mapping their journey... Like any good recycling person, keep breaking down those boxes. I'll see you soon.